I want to talk about Iraq here in a second, but I want to ask mm. about Salman Rushdie first, which may be an interesting uh, a segue. You are uh, you consider Rushdie a good friend, and he considers yes. you a good friend, and you were actually quite moved to to speak out when the fatwa, the liberal fatwa against Salman Rushdie was was ordered. And it, that was a pretty significant moment in terms of your view of religion, yeah. was it not? It was my 9-11, if you like, yeah. 14th of February, 1989. Explain. Well, on that day, Valentine's Day, 1989, it doesn't really matter that he was a friend of mine, but I'm proud to say that he, he was and remains one. Remember exactly what happened. The theocratic head, dictator of a foreign state, the Ayatollah Khomeini, appears in public to offer money in his own name, without disguise, for the suborning of murder. Pretty extraordinary thing for a religious leader to do. Mm. For the crime of writing a work of fiction. Directed at someone who isn't even an Iranian, who lives in London. Now, this is a pretty frontal assault on everything that I believe in and value. Free expression, free inquiry, the right of the individual to be free of state terror, all of this. And... Um, I thought, it was the first time I thought, well, they're trying to change our regime, our so society. They mustn't be allowed to do that. But further than that, we better have to change theirs. And you, we and can't put up with this. Yeah. That was for a later time. At the time, I noticed another thing. Okay, here you have on the one side free expression, the liberty of the individual, the right of free inquiry, the right of literary production. On the other, superstition, murder, the offer of gain for murder and of course a ticket to paradise naturally thrown in and an offer of virgins to young men who mostly as far as I can see actually are virgins sick repressed young men who've been who've had their sex lives ruined by religion as well as everything else okay pretty horrible um, where are the churches coming out on this well the Pope said the problem was Salman Rushdie had committed blasphemy. The Archbishop of Canterbury said the problem was Salman Rushdie had committed blasphemy. The Chief Rabbi of Israel said the problem was Salman Rushdie had committed blasphemy. They all lined up in effect with the Ayatollah. So that's also my, part of my answer to your question was, you know, I shouldn't judge religion by its fringe adherence. Right. Let, let me ask about Iraq in the remaining time we have left. You have very famously been a supporter of the, uh, of the war and mm. have uh, refused in the face of uh, criticism and uh, of people who were like you, supporters of the war, backing down. You've refused to change your position. <clears throat> you, are, you continue to be a supporter of the war. I think Iraq is a keystone state right. to which we owe a large number of debts, partly because of past policy errors going back through several administrations. Mm that it would be absolutely unthinkable to abandon the Iraqi people to al-Qaeda in Mesopotamia. That they demonstrate every day what would happen to the Iraqis if we withdrew, and to ourselves. It seems to me elementary. I prefer to say the word uh, struggle rather than war. It's a struggle between my Iraqi and Kurdish friends, or rather my Arab and uh, Kurdish Iraqi friends, and their allies, that's us, their friends, that's you and me, I hope, against barbarism. Call it a struggle. Saying stop the war sounds better, means you're anti-war, which is sort of okay. But if you just change it by one word, and not very much, what it says is surrender. It's not worth fighting over. Let the other side win. Well, what, what, we, have nothing worth, we have nothing worth defending. Um, this, is, this is moral and political suicide. What people would say, though, is that it's not so much end the struggle, it's end, again, putting words in their mouth admittedly, but end the, um, the deaths of American soldiers on behalf of a cause that is of questionable interest. Now, I know you disagree with this, but is of questionable national interest to this country. You disagree. Well, they may want the struggle to be bloodless, but then they should have picked another enemy. Or they should have found a nicer one than al-Qaeda to be fighting. Do you, you believe they that... Want, the, oh, wait a minute. You see, see the incoherence of what... I know you're not speaking in your own words, but if suppose that was someone's position, see how incoherent it would be. The same people say it's a distraction from the fight against al-Qaeda. It is the fight against al-Qaeda. Giving al Anbar province to al-Qaeda is not taking part in the struggle against al-Qaeda. It's capitulating to al-Qaeda. If you want to fight against al-Qaeda and not have any unpleasant bloodshed, then maybe you should pick some other enemy to have. But this one seems to have picked us. And I expect the fight to be going on for the rest of my life. And I expect people to get killed in it a lot. When, when but I want the, uh, be the United States Armed Forces who playing this exemplary role in Iraq, mm. are getting better and better and better at reducing our casualties and increasing theirs. And that's what I like to see. And I want those two graphs to get even sharper than they are now. When, when, when critics of your point of view say, but al-Qaeda was involved in 9-11 and Iraq wasn't, and yet we chose 
to fight in Iraq as opposed to in Afghanistan. Well, we, excuse where, me, we went first to Afghanistan and cleaned out the Taliban. Right, but there are those who would say that uh, we didn't finish the job in Afghanistan, and actually the Al-Qaeda and Taliban have come back in greater numbers in Afghanistan than before the invasion, or, as, or equal numbers, and that, in fact, Al-Qaeda was not in Iraq until we began the war. Again, that, that's the popular criticism. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know how people believe it's in the face of all the evidence. Right. First, we did clean out the Taliban from from uh, Afghanistan. If they're not all gone, it's because, unfortunately, our supposed ally Pakistan has a long common border with Afghanistan and is never going to let its former clients completely go out of business. But they, they can't get Afghanistan back. We can completely stop them from doing that. In Iraq, we know very well that the, the leading uh, ghoul of al-Qaeda, um, Mr. Zakawi, was in Baghdad well before that. And if you look even at Mr. Tenet's book, a man who dislikes the whole operation and if, who never wanted us to go to Iraq in the first place. And you don't seem to have much respect for him. None, whatever. I can't right, believe so. he was ever the head of anything, let alone of a national intelligence service. But he says yeah. in his book, you know, the alarming, really truly alarming signs of increasing cooperation between Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden just could not any longer be ignored, unless you were willing to face the American people later and say, well, perhaps I should have paid attention. The, the position that bin Laden and, and, and Hussein were in any way allied is one you acknowledge is in dispute. There are people who disagree about that. There no, there, no, there's no disagreement about it. There's only disagreement about the extent of it. We don't know if it rose to the level of operational uh, cooperation or not. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It, it, if it was up to me, it never would. Mm -hmm. The regime that was flirting with it would cease to exist. Go, gone. Would, would we the not president have, who didn't do that would have, should, should have been impeached. Would we not have been better off killing bin Laden as opposed to moving off of bin Laden and getting on to Hussein? No, we had an appointment with Saddam Hussein. Anyway, remember, the, uh, both houses voted under the Clinton administration in 98. Uh, I think without demur for the Iraq Liberation Act, that it shall be the policy of the United States of America to remove the Saddam Hussein regime anyway. 9-11 mm -hmm. is essentially irrelevant to this. It only makes it more urgent. Right. And, and you, you wrote on a slate one of And your, that was partly know. because of his consistent and up until then uh, un, unwaveringly consistent this, uh, use of Baghdad as a place of hospitality for, for Abu Nidal, uh, for Abu Abbas, the man who killed uh, Klinghoffer, uh, for his, his financing of the Islamic Jihad suicide bombers in Palestine. Huh. All, all of that was undisputed as well. The idea that he wouldn't go near the next most lethal uh, anti-American force in the region is on its own face absurd. Well, we're out of time. I have a lot more to talk about on mm. Iraq. I wish we had longer, but I appreciate Me very too. much your being here. Thank you very much, for the, and, and congratulations on the book, and, and good luck with your tour. Very nice of you to Thank have you, me. Christopher Hitchens. Appreciate it. Mucho gusto. You. Uh -huh.